What's going on growers? It's James Frigioni coming to you live from Jersey today. Me and Tucker are going to share with you five mistakes you cannot afford to make when growing squash. Let's go! The first mistake you cannot afford to make when growing squash is allowing squash pests, especially the squash vine borer, to kill your plants. I will go into how to protect your plants and how to prevent the squash bugs from actually killing them, but first I want to show you what to do if the squash vine borer has already burrowed into your plant, because some of you might be dealing with that right now. Here is a squash vine from a previous year, and you can see that the squash vine borer have already started to burrow into the stem at the base of the plant. What happens is they lay eggs around the plant, then the young larvae go into the stem, they bore into it, they eat away at the stem, and they eat away into the stem, which blocks the flow of water. Without the flow of water, this plant really can't uh, you know, get any water and survive and thrive. So what I like to do, one of my little tricks, is once I see this first starting to happen early, if I can't prevent it, then what I do is I move further down the vine, you'll notice right here, and I bury the vine further down the stem. What this does is it forces it to root into the ground. So essentially I'm switching from the roots coming from the, you know, all the way at the back of the vine to the middle here. So that squash vine borer is working in there, preventing the water from moving from the ground through the plant, but it's not gonna be an issue when I root it down here. So I'm gonna just pull back these a little bit just to show you, cause it's probably started to root into the ground. You'll notice as I'm starting to move this that we'll start to see some roots, like right here, if you can see. They're starting to root into the ground already. I don't want to move it too much to disturb it, but this is how I like to save this, this plant right here. And it really thrives once it roots into the ground. I like to do this again once I start seeing the issues from the squash vine borer. And then this increases my production and the length of time that this uh, plant will actually produce. Let's just say that your squash plants haven't been attacked by the cucumber beetles, the squash vine borers, or the squash bugs yet. A good way to protect your plants before the attacks commence is to use an insect netting just like this. Really simple solution. Cover your plants so that the pests can't get to them. Just make sure that you remove the net when the plants start to flower. This way the bees can come in and pollinate your squash plants unless you plan on doing that by hand by yourself. Another thing that I like to use is the surround kaolin clay. This is a super, super fine clay and you spray it on the plants when they're young. This makes the plants way less attractive to all different kinds of pests and for something like the squash bugs you want to make sure that you're spraying this clay not only on the top part of your plants but also on the underside this way the squash bugs don't want to lay their little orange eggs on the underside of the leaves also this year what I'm doing is I'm spraying my, the stems of my plants with the surround kaolin clay because the squash vine borers like laying their eggs right around the stem and on the stem of the plants. So I'm spraying the clay on the stems. This clay really helps protect from the bugs because the squash bugs and the squash vine borers and stuff, they don't like getting their reproductive organs and their antennas all gummed up from that clay. So it really helps as a nice preventative. Another thing you can do is you can use variety selection to your advantage. Let me bring you back to a crop that I'm using. So back here, I am growing the Blue Hubbard squash. This squash is highly susceptible to squash bugs, squash vine borers, and cucumber beetles. So I'm essentially planting this as a trap crop. The idea is to have all the pests come after this crop and avoid some of the varieties that I really enjoy. Varieties like the Castata Romanesco. So this is like a trap or sacrificial crop. Another thing you can do is if you don't even want to deal with the squash bugs and squash vine borers, is you can plant a variety like this one right here. This is the butternut squash. These are practic this variety is practically immune to the squash vine borers and the squash bugs. So sometimes it's much easier to not even have to manage a problem. It's much easier just to avoid it. I can hear something in the background. It sounds like someone's actually crunching possibly on a carrot. Looks like Tuck might have found a carrot or something. Let's check him out. What are you doing over here, boy? Did you harvest your own carrot? Oh my gosh, you got a monster one. Look at that. I turn around, this guy gets up on the bed, digs himself a carrot. When he needs a snack, he just ends up finding it himself. Classic tuck move right there. Using any of these preventative measures, or all of them together, will greatly reduce the chance of your plants being attacked and destroyed by these terrible pests. When it comes down to it, the squash vine borers, the squash bugs, and the cucumber beetles are like the main issues when it comes to growing squash. If you stay on top of these, your harvest will be so much larger because they are just the biggest culprit. You can see some of my plants back here. 
squash. I've even sprayed these with the uh, surround kaolin clay. Now, there is one thing me and Tuck need to mention. So, um, I read in the comments that a number of you watch the videos with your kids, and my nieces and nephew, nephews also watch the videos. So we're adding a new segment to the uh, videos. We think it's gonna be a lot of fun, and we got the idea from them. And the idea is, we're gonna call it the gnome challenge. So throughout this video and the future videos, there will be this little gnome hidden in the background of one scene or maybe two scenes. So whoever spots the gnome first and puts the timestamp down in the comments, we will be sending you a free t-shirt. So when you leave that comment, I'll respond back with the email and you could send me an email and we'll send out a free t-shirt to you guys. So this will be the gnome challenge. Make sure to keep your eyes peeled in future videos. Me and Tuck also wanted to mention to check out the merch down at jamesprigioni.com if you wanna just get a shirt yourself by buying one. So this is the flower of life right here and it's the gardening is life t-shirt. One other thing we want to mention is that squash are heavy feeders. So in order to get good consistent harvest all the way up till frost, you wanna make sure they're giving them the fertilizer that they need. We suggest using our own fertilizer, JP's Secret Stuff. It's a great fertilizer, it works really nice. It's what we're using for all of our garden and the plants are growing fantastic. So you can check this one out also at jamesprigioni.com. Let's move over to our second mistake you cannot afford to make when growing squash. The second mistake is not staggering your plantings and failing to plant another round of squash in July. This is another great way to avoid some of the squash pests like the vine borers because if you plant later in the season, then the squash vine borers, they stop laying their eggs later in the season. So you'll basically miss the whole window of time when the vine borers lay their eggs on your squash. Also at this time, the cucumber beetles are less prevalent. What I like to do is I'll plant an early round of squash. Then when those are about in full bloom, I'll go around and I'll plant in either cells or in open spots in the garden, another round of squash. This way I'll get the early harvest from the squash that I planted early in the season. And if the squash vine borers are too much and they kill off some of those plants, I still have another round of squash growing. This way I can continue that harvest and I miss the window when all those squash pests are out really decimating plants. The third mistake you can't afford to make when growing squash is allowing bad pollination to greatly reduce your harvests. So if you have a lot of young squash that are growing and then all of a sudden they are small and then they turn yellow and fall and die off that's because they're not getting pollinated so to deal with this what you can do is you can go out yourself and pollinate them by hand the way to do this is you can use a q-tip or a paintbrush or even the male flower first we want to come out in the morning and identify the male flower the male flower looks like this it's just got this long thin stem and it's much different from the female so what I'm gonna do is take this I'm gonna dip it in I'm gonna get some uh, some pollen on it, just like this. Next, I'm gonna move over to a female flower right down here. And the female flower is pretty easy to identify because it has that mini little zucchini at the end of it. So then we take the pollen from the male flower and we're just gonna put it into the center and pollinate that female flower just like that. So what that's gonna do is ensure ourselves a better overall pollination. If we want though, we could just take this male flower like this and kind of you know, peel away some of the leaves and then just put it into the center like this too, if you want. So this is just ensuring ourselves a better pollination overall, which will lead to bigger harvest because more fruit equals more food basically. The fourth mistake you can't afford to make when growing squash is forcing your plants to stop producing because you allow the squash to fully ripen on the vine. When it comes to summer squash, if you allow one squash to over ripen on the vine, then the whole vine will quit producing. What's happening here is if you allow that one squash to over ripen, the whole plant will transition from the, produ the production of flowers and fruit over to the ripening of the seed within that one squash that you let over ripen. When it comes to your summer squash, it's always better to pick them early and often. I think the younger squash, when they're small, taste even better. They're sweeter and they're softer when they're young. The most ideal time to harvest your squash is going to be once the blossom drops off the end of the squash. This little hint and this little tip of making your harvesting early and often, this is only for summer squash. This does not pertain to your winter squash. If you stay on top of harvesting your summer squash, you will be able to harvest your squash all the way up to the frost. The fifth mistake you cannot afford to make when growing squash is allowing disease and damaged leaves to remain on your vines. So if you see a leaf 
that is dying back or has some form of a disease issue, get that out as soon as possible. Don't be afraid to prune your zucchini because if one plant, one leaf has some kind of fungal issue or disease, that could easily bubble up and get worse and spread to the rest of your plant. So once you see an issue arise, get to it as early as possible. Prune out those leaves pretty close to the stem like I'm doing here and just get rid of it. I know it might seem counterintuitive sometimes for new gardeners to be removing leaves from your plants. You would think taking away actually makes the plants a lot weaker, but when it comes down to it, taking away some of the leaves, it opens up the plant to more light and more airflow, which helps reduce disease. Also, removing any leaves with diseases on them is super important because you don't want that disease just uh, blowing up and spreading to other areas of the plant. I wouldn't remove many leaves or really any leaves above where your squashes are still fruiting. Instead, you can remove some of the leaves below where the squash are fruiting, some of those larger leaf, leaves closer to the base of the stem, just to open the plant up to more light and to more airflow. Those are the five mistakes you can't afford to make when growing squash, but me and Tuck always like leaving you with a few extra pieces of information. So a few other mistakes you cannot afford to make is you can't afford to plant your squash out too early. Squash are sun lovers. They like the warm weather. So you don't want to plant your squash out too early or that's going to really weaken the plant. Instead, it's always better to be a week or two late rather than too early. Another thing you never want to do when it comes to squash is when you're watering, you do not want to get the leaves wet. When you get leaves wet, those are way more susceptible to mildew and other fungal issues, so it's always better to water at the base. If you don't have much space, a good thing to do to save space when growing squash is to grow them vertically. Just make sure it's a binding squash like the Casada Romanesco, but right here you can see we've got this squash planted and this post right here will be able to tie this squash as it starts to grow and allow it to grow vertically, saving space and also making it kind of easier to harvest some of the things. Another thing you have to think about is when it comes to your squash, as they start to get really long, say about five feet long, it's a good idea to go out there and prune off the growing tip at the end of the squash. What this will do is it will uh, force the squash to put out suckers similar to tomatoes lower down the plant and this will increase the amount of fruit you're going to be getting. Instead of having one uh, squash vine with one growing tip with like us uh, that's five feet long you can kind of spread out the production throughout the plant a little bit more tucks had a blast out here and so have i that's today's video growers thanks for watching we hope you enjoyed it we hope you got something out of it we hope some of these mistakes you can avoid this way you can get massive zucchini summer squash any of those kinds of harvests all the way up to a frost and we really uh, want you guys to make sure you plant that second round of squash. That will make a big difference, especially if you have missed out on some of these mistakes and it's a little later in your season and you can't really avoid them now. So planting that second round will make a big difference. We wanted to mention to check out the merch down at jamesprigioni.com. Grab a, a Gardening is Life shirt with the flower of life right on it. Also check out some of the fertilizer if you want to grab some fertilizer. And we want to send a thank you to one of our new channel mem members, Michael Eric B. Thanks for being a part of Team Grow. Thanks for having your hand in everything we're doing out here. We've got some more big harvest coming up in the future. The potatoes are looking the best they ever have. And uh, just so many of the fruits, the vegetables, everything's just growing fantastic. So we're so thankful that you guys are a part of this. And if you want to be a part of Team Grow, just hit the join now button down low and do not forget to hit the subscribe button too. We had a blast. Tuck just has been chilling out. It's, it's kind of a mellow, chill day today. Not a lot of sun out, but uh, we're just thankful to be out here and we'll th we're thankful that you guys are out here with us. James and Tuck will be back to you again real soon. We out.